In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the normal probability distribution and specifically how you use the standard normal to uh, solve some probability problems. First of all, on this page, we'll take a look at some of the characteristics of the standard normal distribution. Now, normal distributions, or a normal distribution, is a continuous, which means that the uh, random variable, or whatever you want to call it, can have any value whatsoever. It's not discrete like some probability distributions where, uh, like when you're tossing a coin, you can get three heads, or four heads, or five heads, but you can't get like 3.6 heads, because it's countable. So normal distributions are used for something that's measurable. Uh, they model a wide, wide range of data. I've given a few examples here, tried to make it fairly wide. Uh, for example, heights of people, test scores, chocolate bar masses, the length of time light times that light bulbs last. So those are a few examples, but the normal distribution can be used to uh, model many, many of them. And a normal distribution graph looks like this. It's, uh, it's symmetrical. Um, it's centered about the mean. Actually, we're getting into some of the characteristics here. Uh, so, uh, it's symmetrical about the mean. The uh, symbol that's used for the mean in the normal distribution is mu. And so, in this case here, uh, mu would be zero. Uh, so, uh, this is for the standard normal. Not every normal distribution will have a mean of zero, but there's a transformation uh, formula you can use to transform any distribution so it matches up with the standard normal. And we'll start to show, I'll show some of that in the next page and that's in all the examples. So the mean is in the middle. Uh, the mean is the zero and the standard deviation for the standard normal is one. It's called, that's why it's called standard. So the, di the distance between here and one standard deviation above would be that uh, from zero to below one standard deviation below would be that so it's uh, it's one. Now one of the characteristics of a normal distribution is that 68 percent of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean and in this graph here if that's the mean right there so within one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above that's actually 68 percent of the data that's one of the characteristics of a normal curve so 68% between here and here. 95% is within two standard deviations, so between two below and two above. And then almost all the data is within standard, three standard deviations, 99.7%, so there's only 0.3% left three, below three standard deviations below the mean or uh, above three standard deviations above the mean. Now. So that's one of the characteristics, or not one, but several of the characteristics of a standard normal curve. This is actually true of any normal distribution, not just the standard. And I forgot my 99.7%. Now, um, since many normal, or most, almost all, normal distributions will not have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, we use a z-scored formula, and this is the z-score formula, to convert so we can use the standard normal distribution. And I'll talk about this table in a moment. So the way you convert so your particular normal distribution matches up with the standard normal is to find the z-score, you take the uh, whatever number you're talking about, subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation, and that converts it so it will match up with the standard normal distribution. Now, what this chart represents, and if you remember from the previous page, I'll just go back there. Remember, there were almost 100% of the data is between three standard deviations below and three above. Let's go back to the chart here. So that's why this table goes from almost exactly negative three to down here at positive three, and I'll explain where the three and negative three come from here. Um, so a Z score, with a whole number and first decimal places in this column here. And then this is actually the second digit, like the 100th digit uh, here. So uh, this number right here, the 0 0.00139, would, would correspond to, a, to being negative 2.99 standard deviations below the mean. Uh, if you go right down to the bottom right hand corner, this 0 0.99861, which correspond to a Z score of 2.99, or almost exactly three standard deviations above the mean. 
And you might be wondering why I have this particular number circled here. And that's a, an example I have in this page. So let's say, for example, you had um, a Z score of 1.25. And that actually represents um, a, a number that is 1 and a quarter, 1.25 standard deviations above the mean. If you want to find the probability of something happening at, uh, uh, at a Z score of 1.25 or below, and that's what this table gives you, okay, the probability of something happening at a certain point or below, the uh, probability Z is less than or equal to 1.25, which is actually it's the area under the curve. Um, the area under this entire curve would be exactly 1 or 100%. Um, all these uh, numbers here are probability. And so if I want to find the probability that Z is less than or equal to 1.25, I look in my Z score chart. Uh, okay, the 1.25 is positive, so I'm looking on the right-hand side here. 1.2 is here, and then I go over to the 5 column. So this would be the Z, this would be the probability that's associated with a Z score of 1.25. So it's 0.89435. So the probability that Z is less than or equal to 1.25, standard deviations above the mean, would be 0.89435, or almost exactly, uh, well, about 89.4%. So, uh, all, again, all these numbers here represent the probability that something is equal to that Z score or below. So it's, it's always, you can actually calculate uh, probabilities between numbers and above, and that's what the example is going to look at, look at in the next couple of pages. But the table actually gives you probabilities um, that something is equal to that Z score or below it. So um, on the third page here, in example one, it says a population has a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 3.2, and you're asked to calculate the Z score of 8.7. We're not, not going to get into probabilities in the first one here, but we will in the second example, and there's a couple parts in the next page. So to use this uh, Z score formula, the uh, mean is 10, so that's why we're putting 10 in place of mu. We're calculating the Z score of 8.7, so that's the X value, and we're told the standard deviation is 3.2, so 3.2 goes into in place of sigma. And so 8.7 minus 10 would be negative uh, 1.3, and we're going to divide it by 3.2. And so that gives you negative 0.41. So that's the uh, Z score uh, that corresponds to this. This uh, has a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 3.2. And so a Z, the Z score of 8.7 tells you it's 0.41 standard deviations below the mean. That's what that number actually means. And we could calculate probability associated way if we wanted to, but that's not the purpose of the first example, just to use the formula. Second example, and A is in this page, uh, B and C are in the next page. Uh, a potato chip manufacturer makes a product that has a mean mass, an average mass, of 260 grams. And we're told that the standard deviation is 7.3 grams. So we're asked a couple questions. One here. Find the probability of a bag of chips from this manufacturer that has a mass less than 250 grams. So the first thing we'd have to do is what we did here and find the Z score of 250 because this uh, data does not have a mean of one and standard, uh, sorry, a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So we have to convert so we can use the standard normal. So uh, to find the Z score of 250, we put 250 in place of X here minus the mean of 260 divided by the standard deviation of 7.3. So 250 divide, uh, sorry, 250 minus 260 is negative 10. And if you divide that by 7.3, you get negative 1.37. So the probability, and if you want to call X the uh, uh, event that the chip bag has a mass less than 250, so we're trying to find, we're asked to find the probability of X is less than 250 grams. That's equivalent to the probability that Z, if I'm the standard normal, is less than or equal to negative 1.37. If you notice, I changed less than to less than or equal to. Because when you have a continuous random variable, like the normal, it's indistinguishable between less than or less than or equal to. Because it's continuous. Uh, you could have a mass of 250, you could have a mass of 250.00001 or 249.99999 
and so because it's continuous um, the we always use less than or equal to or greater than or equal to um, because that's what the table actually gives you and that's because it's continuous if it was discrete then there would be a difference here so uh, I've duplicated part of the uh, chart from the uh, previous page and so we're looking for negative 1.37 so we look for negative 1.3 first here and then for 7 sevens in the uh, third column here so we would actually be looking for that number right there so the probability z is less than or equal to negative 1.37 would be 0 0.08534 so there's about an 8.5 percent chance of getting a bag of chips with less than 250 grams. What it looks like in a, the standard normal is this. Uh, if you locate that, see, th this is this really corresponds to 250 grams. We, we found the Z-score of 250 and it was negative 1.37, which means that that point, that 250, is actually 1.37 standard deviations below the mean. So to find the probability of something happening at 250 or below 250, we're actually finding the area under the curve below that negative 1.37. So this area in here is the 0 0.08534. So onto the uh, next page and the last two examples. <clears throat> in B, we're asked to find the probability of buying a bag of chips having a mass between 250 grams and 272 grams, 255, sorry, and 272. So what we'd have to do is find the z-scores for each of these. So using the uh, z-score formula, 255 goes here, so 255 minus the 260 mean, divided by a standard deviation of 7.3. And so that would actually be negative 5 divided by 7.3, is, which is negative 0.68. Do the same with 272. So 272 goes in here, minus 260 divided by 7.3, and you get a z-score for about 1.64 for that one. So that means that uh, 272 is about 1.6 standard deviations above the mean, and the 255 is about 0.68 standard deviations below the mean. So we're asked to find, and if we want to call x the random variable that represents the masses of these bags of chips, we're asked to find the probability it's between 255 and 272. So that's equivalent, when we convert to the standard normal, that the probability of z is between negative 0.68, because that's the z-score that corresponds to 255, and 1.64, because that's the z-score that corresponds to 272 grams. So we're finding the probability between these. Now, the way you find the probability between them, and I'll explain with the, the diagram down here, is you find the probability that z is less than or equal to 1.64, and you subtract from it the probability z is less than or equal to negative 0.68. Now, if you look in the chart, and here's my chart, so I want to find the uh, probability that goes with 1.64. So 1.6 4, see here's the 4 column, would be uh, this number 0 0.94950. And then for the uh, negative 0.68, I need this side, the negative side on the left. So negative 0.6, and this is the 8 column, is 0 0.24825. So the probability there goes is 2, 0.24825. And so we subtract them and get 0 0.70125. So that's the probability that a mass is between 255 grams and 272. What this actually looks like in the chart is this. What we're trying to find, and if you, uh, if you did this for the, uh, before you converted, um, this would be the 255 grams right here, and this would be the 272 grams. So you're trying to find the probability between them. We have a mass between them. When we converted using the z-score, the 255 converted to a negative 0.68 z-score and the 272 to 1.64. So uh, on the standard normal, now this is that's what it looks like. That's the same thing. So in order to find this area, what we would do is this. The 0 0.94950 was the probability associated with a z-score of 1.61. That's actually the probability of anything less than the 1.64. The 0.2485 is the probability of being below the point, negative 0.68. So if you take all the area down here, and subtract from it this area here, 
then you're left with the area between them. And so that's why we subtract these probabilities, because this is everything below the 1.64, and this is everything below the negative 0.68. So between them would be the difference. So the probability of getting a bag between those is about 70%. Okay, last, let's get rid of these two charts. Last example over here and C, find the probability of buying a bag of chips having a mass more than 280 grams. So this last example is how you do a, a bigger than probability. So again, back to the Z score. You need to find the Z score of 280. So 280 minus 260 divided by 7.3. So basically it's 20 divided by 7.3. So about 2.74. So the probability that the random variable X, or whatever you want to call it, a bag, mass of bag of chips, is greater than 280 grams is the same as the probability that Z is greater than or equal to 2.74. Now, in the, uh, in the diagram here, so there's the 2.74. Remember, the top of the uh, diagram is, is getting to be around 3. That's why it's pretty far to the right here. So that, that 280 is actually about 2.74 standard deviations above the mean. So it's a, maybe not, we might not call it an anomaly, but you're not going to get a lot of bags that have a mass that large. So 2.7 is really getting it towards the upwards part of the graph here. So what we're asked to find is that area right there, the area under the curve and above 2.74. Now remember, the standard normal chart only gives you probabilities below. So we could actually find the probability below, which would be this entire area here below the 2.74. And so in order to find that little bit up there, uh, since we do know or we can find all this area here, uh, if you take 1, because the area on the entire curve is 1, and subtract the... Uh, the probability that is less than 2.74, because this is what the table gives you, then that will give you the probability above. So that's how you do the greater than. You subtract that probability from 1. I'm going to show you a shortcut in a moment to doing this as well. So you look in your chart at uh, 2.74, which is right here. So there's the 4 for the hundredths column. 2.74 is 0.99693. And so let's get it through the chart. We subtract that from 1, and we get 0 0.00307. You should expect a fairly small probability because there's not much area left there. Now, what I want to show you is this. When you're doing the greater than, um, if you take a look at the opposite z-score, so the opposite of 2.74, of course, is negative 2.74, you see this area right here below that, it would be the same as this because the distribution is symmetrical. And so notice, okay, another chart over here. If I look up negative 2.74, notice that that is exactly the same as what we calculated, which leads us to conclude that the probability of Z is greater than 2.74 is the same as the probability is less than its opposite. Okay, so that's a bit of a shortcut rather than going through all of this. We could actually, if you did know this, go directly from this to this and read it from the chart as 0 0.00307. So it's about a little over 3%. So that's how you can do the greater than probabilities. And that's the end of the tutorial.